What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Lake Photography and in today's video, we've got some new features out of Lightroom, some AI goodness, and I thought that we could jump in and test those features out. So Adobe has been on a pretty, I would say consistent march of adding new features, both to Photoshop Lightroom and some of their other Creative Cloud apps, specifically around AI and AI features. I did a video just a little bit ago about the remove tool uh, in Photoshop. It's one of my favorite tools. And recently the CEO of Adobe actually admitted that second to layers, the remove tool is now uh, one of the most commonly used features in Photoshop, which is huge. So now we've got some of these features coming to Lightroom specifically, and I thought that we could go through them. I want to look at uh, the, the new AI remove tool or the new healing generative remove tool. They've also got a new AI adaptive uh, blur feature uh, for background blurring with new presets for all of that and an updated uh, and faster AI denoising feature, which if you've been using the denoising feature that's been in Lightroom now for um, since last year, since the 2023 update, that has been phenomenal. And now it's got an improvement here in the 2024 update. So I thought we'd take a look at all of those now. So let's hop into Lightroom. So I've got Lightroom open here and I just pulled up a photo that I took in my most recent trip out to uh, Southern Utah, out to Alstrom Point. Uh, that video is on the channel. I'll link to it up ahead. Uh, but this is a shot that I took very early as the sun was first kind of creeping up over um, the, uh, up over the horizon. It's not a fantastic photo. There's a lot of stuff I think that needs to get done in this photo to even make it usable. But before we get to that, one thing I noticed right away is it was pretty windy. Um, and you can see here in the upper left hand side uh, of the sky and really all over the sky that my lens was apparently covered with dust. Uh, I think I cleaned this off. I feel like I did, uh, but I was running and gunning and, and going as quick as I could. Uh, so let's go over here to the right side and let's take a look at this new uh, remove tool. This is the new generative remove early access tool. It's in beta. We're going to hit try. We're going to agree to all of the AI things. I think Adobe now owns me. Um, and first off, right, we can get the size control. Can I just say that just being able to do this, <laughs> this is way easier in Lightroom automatically uh, than it is in Photoshop. But we've got the size control here as well as feather and opacity. Okay, let's switch that. Looks like it, I clicked on remove, but it moved me to heal. Uh, okay, so generative AI, object aware, uh, we'll keep that size at 19. Okay, and then it's gonna generate. Okay, and uh, sure. Spots must be contiguous. Sure, let's apply. Let's see what it does. Okay, that looks like it did okay. Let's remove that one now. And this one, and this one, and this one over here. It's not doing anything. Okay, let's apply. Oh, you have to apply each one. Yikes. Okay, immediately I prefer the version of this in Photoshop. <laughs> okay, and generative, and apply. Okay, um, so, I mean, it, it definitely works. Um, if we turn off the generative AI feature and turn off object aware. I wonder if that makes it any faster. It is faster. So basically kind of doing it like the old way. And then if we switch that back to generative. Okay. And then you can kind of click through. I mean, obviously these are just spots in the sky. So that seems to work very similarly to how it does in Photoshop, but it feels more like generative fill than it does the remove tool. Um, so it feels like it's a little bit in between all right, so that is one version. Uh, so interesting to note, I'll, I'll hope that they make some improvements to that process. Okay, next let's take a look at the presets function um, where it will analyze your photo and uh, kind of tell you some of the fun things that you can do with it. And that's exciting, cool. This is a very dark photo. This photo was underexposed. This is actually part of a bracketed exposure, but I pulled it up on purpose because what I want to do is I actually want to just, just pull this photo totally out of where, like we're going to go up, right? Two and a half stops, 
let's take a look in the distance and you can see here there is honestly not a not too much in the way of noise but it's definitely noisy right it's not super clear out there um, and if we added some contrast right you can notice a little bit more but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and utilize the um, the new improved AI denoising feature. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down here and we're going to go to denoise. All right, so let's go ahead and denoise this thing here. And we'll just keep it at that kind of standard uh, 50. And I'm really looking at this, this butte out here in the distance just to kind of see what the difference is. And wow, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and use that advanced feature it's generating the enhanced DNG and so there we are with our updated file that looks pretty great so if we wanted to just like increase uh, you know texture reduce uh, let's say increase our contrast maybe bring our highlights down even further bring the shadows up a little bit more bring the whites down we really want to stretch this image out to see how well this stuff looks we want to remove some of this blue color cast Make it look a little more morning-ish. Increase our vibrance. Bring up our saturation. Maybe bring up our oranges a little bit more. Make them really kind of pop. Switch this over also to luminance. Bring up the oranges on the luminance. And the reds a little bit. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Uh, because then again, we can continue to add things like clarity and texture and sharpness without those effects uh, really kind of being over ex overly exaggerated um, with the, the noise. One thing that I had previously seen in some of Lightroom's kind of denoising features is where it would kind of add texture uh, or add additional um, detail where detail wasn't. Um, and I'm not really seeing that here. So yeah, that, that is super, super cool. All right, so now let's take a look at this new lens blur feature, which is the ability to using their new AI features. And this is apparently also bolstered by using a, a Mac uh, with their neural engine, uh, is that we can add additional blurring features uh, or blurring to our images. So we're gonna go and hit apply and it's gonna take my image and it's gonna estimate the depth map of the image. So now, as you can see, it has basically created an estimate depth map with uh, what it thinks is stuff up front. Uh, here you can see in the focal range, um, as well as items that are far off in the distance, like our butte. And then it has given us these kind of sliders to say, okay, well, how much of it do we want to be in focus? So now if I select the entire thing, it's basically gonna keep, I think, my focus range to be the same as what it was. But if I say, well, I really only want that butte off in the distance to be in focus, and I wanna make it really, really pop, that is what it's gonna do. We can also visualize the depth map, uh, and it gives us kind of a heat map here, which is super cool. And one thing we can see here is that this kind of sharp drop off uh, here at the edge, at the top of this first ridge, I think creates kind of an unnatural um, aspect to it. So if I open that up just a little bit, um, I can then, um, I think, make that look a little bit more realistic. Um, you can also go into the refinement um, and say, okay, well, actually, like, you know, th this area is a little more in focus or this area is a little bit less in focus. And it's kind of a masking tool and you can get super deep into that in order to do it. And this is very similar to the neural uh, depth map feature that we have in Photoshop uh, that has been available in the, in the um, filters panel as an early release for just a little while now. We can also, it looks like, uh, change, I'm gonna just undo that, that bokeh stroke. Uh, we can also, it looks like, change the type of bokeh that we have. So it defaulted to the kind of modern circular lens, but we can switch this to a bubble as if you had like a, like a bubble lens and you wanted um, maybe a, just a different look. Uh, or if you had a lens that had a five blade um, aperture on it, uh, like some of the older lenses. Uh, if you had a full, like one of those telescopic uh, kind of ring donut ones. Um, or if you had uh, a lens that was using uh, or had, uh, you know, cat eye effect on it. But if we switch this back to our kind of standard, um, we can really kind of boost it, pull it down, uh, you know, really push it up and make it like super extreme just to make it 
just give it a, a real particular look. That's fun. I mean, I really enjoy using my lenses to determine whether or not this is something that I'm gonna end up seeing in my final image. Um, I don't know that I would do a lot of this post uh, or in post, but what I do like is that if I, if I maybe, if I take that photo that's just perfect and amazing, but um, I don't like the depth or I don't like how my focus was stacked, uh, I could adjust it, which is really, really nice. Okay, so those are the three newest features that I find super interesting in Lightroom 2024, just released here this in this last week. So we have significant improvements to the AI denoising. We have the new blur feature and the top line feature, which is the removal or generative fill removal tool, uh, similar to what you have in Photoshop, which, um, I prefer the one in Photoshop, but really nice that they're moving these features to be in parity in Lightroom as they use them in Photoshop. Are these tools that you'll be using in Lightroom specifically uh, that you would uh, just jump in and do the update for, or is this stuff that you're gonna find yourself more doing in Photoshop, where you're just like, nope, I'm good, out of camera, I'm happy how it is. Let me know down in the comments, real curious to see what you have to say, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.